Welcome back to another presentation of Three Time. Now today we'll be looking at appliances and plumbing symbols. So where would you find the appliance symbols and where would you find the plumbing symbols? And you'll find these on house plans and you'll find these on elevations and sections. What I've done here, let's look at the appliance symbols category, um, column, sorry. I have all the appliances in plan and, and I have their respective images in elevation. So just let's look at this first one here. This first one is a refrigerator. So this is what it will look like in a plan view when we look down on it, the bird's eye view. And this is what it will look like in elevation. So I've done this for every single appliance and I've also done this for the plumbing symbols. Now, where did I get these symbols from? This is the big question. I have my sources here. And there are two sources that I use. Um, there's one called cadblock.com and then there's dwgmodels.com. So let's just go and look at um, cadblock and see what's going on there and get familiar with this um, page. So I have it down here already, see? So let's go to cadblock. This is cadblock here. Uh -huh. uh, what did I come here for? I mainly came here for the kitchen appliances. So I have my kitchen appliances and I have my washing appliances over here. I'm gonna click on the kitchen appliances. Yeah, and these are them here. You can see a microwave, you can see a toaster. You're able to see um, a blender. You're able to see some pots and did I see a kettle? No, I didn't see a kettle. And these are just a few of the appliances that, that they have here in stock. And if you like this package, you can just come here and go download and it will go down into your tray down here. And when it's finished, you will click. I'm going to make, I'm going to show you guys an example, but I'm going to look for another Let's go, sorry, over to another source. So that's C, that is, sorry, cadblock.com. Now let's go to dwgmodels.com and see what's happening over there on that site. Another site here, this is DWG models. And what I've done is I've bookmarked these so that I can find them easily by just going up here on to my bookmarks and I have them logged and saved in as a bookmark. For this one, we have our stoves, or what are better known as cookers, and you have them in top view, and then we have them in elevation, and you have the corresponding view directly on top. So let's just say I wanted this particular one, right? And then there's some other kitchen appliances down here, then there's dish rear. So there are lots of things in here you guys can check out. There's also trees, vegetation, transportation, uh, landscape. I would advise everyone to browse on these two sites, see what you like and download them for free and actually incorporate them into your drawing. They actually help to make your drawings uh, read better and communicate more effectively. Uh, so let's download this one here, CAD blocks, free downloads, the ovens, hot plates and burners, where do I click for these downloads? So probably click here. Right. So they ask you where do you want to save it as usual. And they give it a name. So I'm going to save it where I keep all of my technical stuff. So let me just go there. Let me just save it in in here. Oh, in there. So that's the oven hot plate burners and stuff like that that I've just downloaded. So after I've downloaded from these sites, what then do I do? I can come down here onto the tray and then I can just access and look. 
straight away it opens and it carries me to a CAD drawing. And I can just click around. And these are absolutely free. Now these are mine. And what I have to do with them is put them into a block and label them so that when I'm ready for them, I can easily reference them and easily access them. So let's say we have this top view here of a cooker and I like this and I like this elevation. What am I going to do? This is the only two things that I want from here. So the first thing is I'm going to isolate them and just grab them and then move them. Or we can copy, doesn't matter. So let's move. All right. Now, the first thing I'm going to do for this cooker, I'm going to put it into a block and label it as cooker plan. And then I'm going to label this as cooker elevation. Put them into a block and then I'm going to delete them and I'm going to show you where I can access these from. All right. So that's the first thing. Then what we're going to do is then we're going to go back to this page and we're going to go through all of these and I'm going to show you images of what they look like. So I show you the symbols and I show you the images. Okay, so let's go back here. All right, so this is a cooker. So BL is the command to bring it the block menu or to bring it the block tool. And now we have entered it. No, I don't think I went in. BL, enter. Good. So now we are in here. Block definition. So the first thing I need to give it a name, so call it cooker. Let's call it cooker four. Because I think I have a cooker in there already. So I wouldn't want it to overwrite. Right. But for you guys at home, this would be your first cooker. So you can call it cooker one. All right. So now they ask me to select objects. So I'm going to come here and this is where you select this object. That's the only thing. Hit enter. And if you look here, it gives you a thumbnail of what it looks like. So that's how we know we're on the right path. And then we have a name there. So we have our name and we have what it looks like. We don't need to do anything with behavior. We don't need to do anything more with objects. So once I'm finished here, I'm going to click here and click OK. So that's my cooker in there. And let's do the same thing for the cooker elevation. So I'm going to select this. I can select first and then go into the menu block. So I'm going to select first, BL, enter. It's already selected, so it's in there, which is a good thing. It's in there as a thumbnail. So all I have to do now is call this cooker elevation. Elevation, let's call it elevation um, for two, so it be consistent. And then hit OK. So that's my cooker. And I'm going to delete them. Now let's say I want to get back these blocks onto the screen because I've deleted these blocks. That's what I'm going to do, delete them. So we have an empty screen and I want to bring these back in. I'm going to go up here to this tab called insert, click it. Then I'm going to go over to the insert block icon. See, insert a block or join into the current join. A good practice is to insert a block from a block library. A block library can be a join file that stores related block definitions or it can be a folder that contains related block sorry related join files each of which can be inserted as a block with either method blocks are standardized and accessible to multiple users all right so let's go here and um, the first thing is once i click here i can see some blocks here ready for me to access them. But let's look for the block that we just created. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to expand this menu now. Well, 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 good. And the ones that came in naturally when I inserted this file are all here. They weren't saved, they were just all here inserted. But then there are ones that I actually renamed, which are the cooker four in plan and then the cooker four in elevation. So let me just access cooker and then it's going to ask me to specify a point where I want to put the block. 
I have specified there. So it should be there. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it is there, but look, it's, it's right here. So this is my block that I've just um, made. And I've just pulled it out of the block menu, right? So I'm going to come here again, go to insert, and I'm now I'm going to go and pull. All right. So they always come in and seem to come in at the top right hand side of the screen. It's not a problem. I just grab it and move it over to where the rest are. So that's it. So that's my cooker plan. And that's my cooker in elevation. And they're saved as both blocks. So I can delete them and anytime I want them, I can come here. Let's see what else is here too. Now there are some other codes. Let's, this is a cooker, but this is still in its code form, 04689. I come in and I pull that there straight out, out of the block menu. Okay, and another thing, if you want to edit these blocks, so say I want to take away one, two, three, four, five, one of these burners. So I'm going to take away one of the burning knobs and I'm going to take away this burner in the middle. So say I want to edit this block. What I need to do is double click and it goes into edit block definition, which is basically a block edit menu. And I just select which one I want. And it's already on that number. So I leave it there and I press OK. Now, this is where I can edit stuff in this gray menu here. This is in the block editor menu. And if you realize that the background is gray and the AutoCAD, um, the regular AutoCAD background is black. So once you see that you're in the gray menu, that means that you're in the editing menu. You can actually edit a block. So I can just delete this like normal by grabbing it, selecting. That's something else selected. So I select these. And then I can just hit close and it asks me the changes you may have not been saved. Basically, this is a prompting you to save this menu here. So go save. And look at that. That's how I've edited a block. So I've removed the burner knob and I've removed the middle burner. But that's all good. So we know to edit a block and we know how to insert a block and we know how to create a block. And where do you find the blocks that you create in right here? Insert. All right. So that's all good. We're going to get out of this file now and we're going to go through these so we everyone has been able to see where i got my blocks from we went to the sites i show you how to download them how to then insert them into the block menu or into the block library and i show you how to access them from the block library so now i'm going to show you what these things look like i'm going to go through these and show you what they look like in person, in, um, in reality. And so let's go to this first one. This is a refrigerator in plan and a refrigerator in elevation. Front elevation and side elevation. Uh -huh. And this is what it looks like here. So this is a refrigerator front elevation, which is quite similar to what we were just looking at here. So I'm going to Show, which is similar to that. Um, the only difference is that the handles are on this side, which is the right side, and on this, the handles are on the left side. It's probably a major difference. Um, that could be changed, but it's still a refrigerator, nevertheless. This image here shows the refrigerator as it's open. You can see down here we have our juices and we've got some shelves. It's pretty stock. This refrigerator is really stuck there. Uh, and over here, it just has the refrigerator as an from the elevation. So this is what a refrigerator looks like. Um, most of you would have these in your home. Now we move on to dryer and washer. So let's look for a dryer and washer here. 
and we can do oh all right so this is a dryer this is a dryer and washer let me just go down and see what else i have okay no we just have a dryer and a washer so both are side by side as you can see they, they both look identical this one is probably the washer and this one would be the dryer the reason I'm saying the one on the right looks like the dryer is because the clothes coming out of here, they look fairly dry, you know, and this will be the last stage. So the first spot would be to wash the clothes, get them clean, and then put them into the dryer and have them spin dry or blow dry. This is a square with a W in the middle to represent dryer, and this one is a square with a D in the middle. All right. Over on the elevation, this is what it looks like. It looks like a rectangle, basically with a circle in the middle. A few knobs here, and this is washer. And it's the same thing, and that is dryer. They're basically identical. The only differentiation is that you look at the note. The note tells you what you're looking at. So you will see W, and you will see D. You see letters to indicate, or you might see a side note down at the bottom to indicate what a washer and what a dryer looks like. And again, this is what it looks like over to the right hand side. This is what both of them look like there. All right. You would find these in a laundry room in the house. Um, so now let's go over to the cooker. Cooker, cooker. Cooker basically means the stove. So there, this is the cooker. And we can see the burners at the top. So it has four burners around here. And these four burners are here in top. And of course, we are looking, we're looking down. So we're looking at it from plan. This is a plan view of the cooker. Uh, the thing about this cooker now is the style of this cooker, it has the controls at the side one, two, three, four, to control the four burners. This one has the controls at the side, as in uh, the side, you can only see the, the, the knobs from elevation. Whereas this one, you see knobs on plan. So there's, slight, there's a slight difference, but it's still a cooker, never, never the less, right? And it has four, five knobs, one, two, three, four. Four to control things above here. And then this one is to control the oven, right? That's what that fifth knob is for usually to control the oven down here. So that's a little more knowledge on cookers. And this is in plan. And let's go now to elevation and let's look and see what we have. Well, in elevation, you're able to see how this is just a rectangle. How, how can we tell this out of difference? Well, it's a rectangle right here. It's a rectangle here, but it has, um, a window in the middle. What's this window here for? This window is so that you can look into the air oven and check the progress of anything that you're baking, right? You can also, some cookers also have lights that you can look into the oven, you can turn on light and you're able to see better the progress of anything that you're baking in your oven. So th this is basically what a cooker looks like in elevation. Again, we got some knobs up here, and you have got some controls, some knobs up there, and stuff like that. But this is it. I think this is a good representation here of the image meeting back the actual symbol. Um, okay, so now let's move on now to another uh, appliance. We move on to the dishwasher. Dishwasher. I hope you folks know what a dishwasher does. Basically, a dishwasher washes dishes. So some people have the privilege of having a dishwasher in their home where you can just stack up um, the rack with your dirty dishes and you can then put them into this dishwasher. You shut it back, you put in your liquid soap, and you set the time and it uses a lot of hot water and it can last about an hour or, or 45 minutes and then you open up 
your dishes are squeaky clean. Um, some people actually use it to store away your dishes as in a dish trainer rather than actually having it above board. So it's, it works for two, two purposes. It works as to clean and it also works to store your dishes away from the counter because storing your dishes on the counter can make it rather um, make it a bit cluttered. And some people don't like that. They like that when they come into a room, everything looks nice and clean, nothing really on the countertop. And uh, I've seen people store the dishes in the dishwasher rather than a dish trainer. But nevertheless, this is what a dishwasher looks like. You would usually find this um, taken at the spot of a cupboard. So this is where you would allocate some space in your cupboard space below the counter. And this is where the dishwasher will go in there. So now let's look at this in uh, in plan. It's just a square with the letters DW to represent dishwasher. In elevation, it's a rectangle with a few knobs at the top. And this is the handle here that you would use to open. So this handle here is right here, right? That's the handle that you would use to pull it down and to pack the dishes inside. So this is what a dishwasher looks like. Dishwasher in symbol, dishwasher in image. All right. So we can move on from here now to a cabinet. Now, a cabinet is comes under the appliance, but a cabinet is not something mechanical, you know. And it's something that can be built by a joiner. Okay. What is the purpose of a cabinet? Well, for storage. You store large things under here, like tall bottles. Bottles are probably about this tall in height. You can store under there. And then you can store your cutlery, you know, in this top drawer or whatever you choose to store there. But this is what a cabinet will look like. And uh, when we come over now to plan, it's just a square with the word cabinet and it has the, the handle right here to show that you can use that handle to access the drawer. That's what a cabinet will look like in plan and in elevation. Now this is a cabinet here with a, with a top. This is a full cabinet. I would say this is a half cabinet, if I'm allowed to say that. And, and this is a full cabinet. So if I want to show what we have here, I can then trim this. Or what I can do is I can go into the block editor and I can then remove that, yeah. And you see, you will get up the exact image of a cabinet so that everything, um, there isn't any inconsistency. That means the drawing here is consistent with the image that I'm showing you. So the cabinet is basically for storage at the end of the day built-in storage. So what else do we need to go through on this list? A water heater, water heater. Where would you find a water heater? You would find it wherever you need hot water, mainly in your showers. So this is a hot water heater that is attached to a shower. And as you can see, it pulls off of the electricity. This is the water heater here. And you can operate it by turning the dial. Hot water comes out of these pipelines and then it comes out into your shower. And you get hot water when you're bathing so that you can get a nice hot water shower. Some people only bathe in hot water, can't bathe in hot water. So this is why a water heater could be important to this house, particular household. But this is what it looks like. 
Now on plan, it is just a circle with the letters WH, which stand for water heater. In elevation, it is a rectangle with these lines. All right, coming straight down. These are vertical lines. And this is what represents water heater and elevation. Of course, it would have the note so that you'll be able to understand when you see this. So these are the kitchen appliances are generally appliances that you'll find in a house, symbols that you would see from time to time that I would like that I'm going to encourage all my students to get familiar. Get familiar with what they look like. Also get familiar as to how to access them. Now let's move over now to the plumbing symbols. Plumbing symbols. Mm -hmm. And over here you would have a tub. So let us now, let me go now out of the appliance symbols and go into plumbing symbols now. now let's look at a tub. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this is what a tub looks like. Nothing too hard. We get a tub here in, this is looking at it from a perspective, but mainly um, plan, looking down into the tub. And uh, well, some of the main things you can see, you can see the drainage point there. And you can see the drainage point there within the tub that allows the water to, to leave and go down the drain and go up to one of the waste disposal systems, my whole septic tank, soak away, and stuff like that. So this is what it looks like in plan, and this is what it looks like in elevation. As for elevation, you see that this is what I mean when you look at it from the side on. All right. So that's a tub there. Now, what's the next thing? We are going to look at a toilet and a urinal. All right. Now, a toilet. A toilet is also known as a WC. What's the WC? They should put that here. Toilet slash WC. WC stands for water closet. That is one of the original names of what a toilet was. Oh, sorry, that was one of the original names for a toilet. Let me just prove it by going here on Google. I mean, I type in WC and see what comes up. And uh, yep, you see WC and you're seeing a bunch of toilets all around the place. Like I said, WC means water closet, water closet. And that is also a term people use for toilets, water closet or flush toilet, right? So that's all you need to know. So that if you see WC and you do not see um, the word toilet, you would know what it means. That's all I'm trying to get my point. That's the point I'm trying to get across. Now, this is what a toilet looks like. Uh -huh. You know, in looking at it from perspective, and uh, this is what it looks like in elevation. This is they're both the front elevation, and then there's the side elevation here. Uh -huh. and you can see where the waste comes through, goes through this pipe, and leaves, and then leaves the whole toilet system and it goes down the drain. So this one has the piping. This is the front elevation, and this is the plan. Okay. So that's what a toilet looks like. You would find out in every home. This is a nice looking toilet here. Very um, very minimal in its design. And now this is a urinal. You wouldn't find a urinal in uh, your home. Um, you would find these in uh, businesses. Um, if you go into a public place, and this is obviously you would find these in men's um, restrooms. If you go into a public place, you'll see a combination of urinals and you'll see toilets too. If you just want to quickly release water for a man, you will just come to your urinal 
Uh, some people like them because they don't have to touch the levers to flush them, whereas in a toilet, after you use the toilet, you flush them. These are pressure sensitive, so after you've made your deposit and you leave, then the urinals actually have an automatic built-in flush system, which takes care of flushing. So you easily can go there and you don't have to touch anything. You just make your deposit, go, leave, go to the sink, wash your hands, dry your hands, and then leave. And whereas with the toilets and the already water closets, you would have to press the button to flush. Although I've seen some toilets now that they are also pressure sensitive. So that once you leave and you finish your deposit, you, you, you um, it flushes automatically. Yeah, that's how technology is, you know, things are moving to an automatic, moving from manual to automatic. All right. So this is what it will look like in elevation here, which you can see is quite similar to this over here. Um, yeah. What else do we have now that we can look at? We can look at a bathroom sink. So this is what a sink looks like, and this is a sink within a counter. All right, so if I just take that away, you would see it. that's the counter. And now this is the sink here installed into the counter. Now this sink is, I tend to use a round sink all the time, despite I might be going for a rectangular sink, you know, but I tend just as a standard to use a round sink right here. So what you will find is that this is the symbol to represent bathroom sink, but this is not exactly the style sink that I'm going for. So I want people to recognize that. Let's look over here. Okay, this is a nice looking modern um, sink within a cabinet. And you have the drawers. This first drawer would be a dummy drawer. This would be, okay, let me just, let me just go on to that. This would be a dummy drawer, meaning that this is just there for aesthetics. It is impossible to open up and get any space where there's a sink that's going to be there, right? So that's just what you call a dummy drawer. Um, but then these, one, two, three, oh, those are good to go. And then you have space under here. When you open up these, um, when you open up those two doors, you would have some large space under there to store bottles or whatever. But this is a nice looking sink. And this is what a sink within a cabinet looks like when we look at it from, you know, from a perspective. Okay, so that's sink there. This is what the elevation will look like, which is quite similar. We have our two doors here, the cabinet. We got a door there and a door there. And then we have what we'll call our dummy drawer right here at the top. All right. So let's carry on now. Now, a freestanding sink. Now, a freestanding sink. Let's go to that one, which is this. This is a sink without a cabinet around it. Like, like the term says, it's a freestanding sink. And you would find these in bathrooms. But some people, you would place these in half bathrooms. What is a half bathroom? A half bathroom is a bathroom that only carries a sink and a toilet. Mainly, you would find these where you, people have large homes and they want to have a bathroom for their guests so that the guest that comes to the home, if you're entertaining people, doesn't necessarily use your personal bathrooms. You have a designated bathroom for your guests and it's called a half bathroom. Some people call it a powder room, but this is where you would find a freestanding sink, right? More than likely you would find it in there. That's what it looks like. That's the plan. Let's look at the elevation. And uh, it, this one has a thicker stem right here. This one has a very thin stem. But nevertheless, they're still categorized as the same thing. Freestanding sink, and we're looking at it from elevation. So let's move on now. What's the next thing we're going to look at now? 
there is a double sink with a cabinet. Well, so do I have any of these? Yeah, double sink with a cabinet right here. Looking at it from a plan perspective, not exactly plan view. <laughs> so what's the main feature here? Two sinks. So why would you want two sinks and where would you want these? You would find this in a master's bathroom. A master's bathroom is usually a his and her bathroom. It's called master because it's the master of the house. Um, not necessarily meaning gender as in a man's bathroom. And you would usually find this is the room where a husband and wife would do their showering. So in case they're both needing to get ready, they both need to get ready at the same time. They have a designated sink for him and there's a designated sink for her, all right? And above here, you would have one big mirror. So they both can be using the mirror, getting ready at the same time without actually um, disadvantaging each other, right? So that's the purpose of a mask, sorry, of a double sink with a cabinet. So it's just two sinks, you know, with the same cabinet. It has double the space for storage under here. Yeah. And you usually find this in a master bathroom, a bathroom which is going to be used by both him and her. All right. So that's what a double sink looks like. And that's the reason behind a double sink. And this is a double sink in elevation, as you can see. And of course, in elevation, you wouldn't really see these. You wouldn't see the outline of the sink. That's why I have them dash. In reality, these you wouldn't be able to see through the material. So if you look closely, that's why these are represented by dash lines, because they tell the reader that this is something happening behind the material, behind this material here that we can't see we see the outline of the sink and it's and all the plumbing um, the plumbing system. All right. <clears throat> so let's move on now. So we're coming close to the end here and we are at shower, floor drain, and then this is what a shower looks like in elevation. So this is a shower and plan. As we can see the main drain area, which happens to be this. So this has been blown up extremely large but that is supposed to be that so this has been scaled up probably about four times the size and let's go over here and so this is a floor drain so let's start with that saying that it's here this is a floor drain and uh, what does this mean this takes all the water and uh, the water that's in the shower goes to that point and it goes down the drain and for them, it goes on the drain, it goes through the mile hole to the septic tank and possibly to a soak away. But it goes out where it will be treated. So that's what a drain looks like. Nice, fancy looking drain, stainless steel. Mm -hmm. And now let's go, let's go to what a shower looks like. Let's look for a shower here. this way right here's the shower and let's look at the shower and you'll recognize that the drainage is square this has a square drain doesn't really matter um the drain is a drain it can either be square it could be round it can be triangular whatever but i've seen square and i've seen wrong drain so this is the same thing i just want everyone to know it's a drain i just tend to represent mine by a circle circles are the ones that you tend to see more and uh, this is the shower in here and it has a nice little small area where you can sit down if you want to sit down and scrub your feet so you don't off balance um, then it has a nice little pocket in here you can pull you can place your soaps and shampoos and stuff so it's really nice 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 to shower though with a few features a feature of a seat and the area where you can put your your soaps and stuff like that. And this is the shower uh, rose, which lets out the water there. 
R, we can have this, which you can control because you can move. You can move this way hand. Where is this one? This is a glass, glass door. So there's so much privacy there. But then again, once you're in the room, you can shut the main door to the washroom. So you have enough privacy. There you don't have to worry about privacy. You shut that door on the out there. Uh, yeah, so let's look here at elevation. Now this elevation is an old school elevation, meaning, let's tell you why. It has, I'll tell you what, it has shower curtains. These are shower curtains here. So you get in and you will pull these curtains across. But this one has a glass door. That's the difference. So at some time, I would use this to represent a shower in elevation, but more than likely I will go with this one, which has the glass door rather than use the one that has the shower curtains. But I would use the shower curtains as only a representation of this is what a shower in elevation would look like, all right? So that's how I use these uh, symbols. Now, this brings us to the end of this tutorial. And uh, what did we do today in this tutorial? Well, we went through the appliance symbols and the plumbing symbols. So we did uh, refrigerator, washer, dryer, cooker, dishwasher, cabinet, water heater. We did tub, urinal, water closet, slash toilet, bathroom sink, freestanding sink, double sink with cabinet, shower, and drain. So I went through all these symbols and I've shown you how to make a symbol by going on to the internet. You know, you grab your symbols from either and uh, DWG models, or you can go to cadblock.com. These are absolutely free. You download them. Once you download them, you click here onto the tray. They open up in AutoCAD auto automatically. You make a block. You save them, give them a name, you know, name that is associated to the symbol. And uh, you organize them and they go into this library, which is under the insert tab. You go to insert, and you can actually find anything that you have made here. I even have my trees here. I have my beds, queen size bed. And I have a bunch of things in here that I use on a regular basis. Okay. So this is the end of our symbols. And the next time we would be looking at doors and window symbols and uh, looking at the doors, going a little further, looking at the details, uh, the parts of the door, parts of the window, symbols also for plan and symbols for elevations for our doors. All right. I would encourage everyone to take some time and create your catalog or what some people will call the library your library of symbols so that when you're drawing and you need anything, you can just go to insert and you can find them. I do not expect anyone to sit down at home and draw these symbols. But what I do is I expect people to go and search for these symbols on the internet and compile a library for yourself. So that when you're ready, you can just have a click. And at the click of your fingers, you can find everything that you want in terms of the appliance symbols, and the plumbing symbols. Now, this brings me to the end of this tutorial. I hope that it was informative and very helpful. I encourage you guys to keep practicing technical drawing that's so you get better at it and improve your skills by organizing yourself. All right, take care and I am out.